There's only five tutorials in this course. So it frightens me, some of you are still doing tutorial one. I don't know why. There's only five tutorials. Okay, tutorial three is on money market, ISLM. But if you really read through the tutorial, there's only two questions on money market, which is question one and two, that's all. So money market, it's not heavily tested in the exam. Alright, okay, because it is the basics to the LM. Whereas the focus of tutorial 3 is the IS LM. Okay, again, my tutorials are extracted from recent past year question. I gave you the easiest, the common to the three key ones. Alright, and I will insist you must know how to do tutorial 2 to 4. You can drop tutorial 1, you can don't know how to do tutorial 5, you definitely must know how to do tutorial 2 to 4. So tutorial 2 was Solomon's room. Really finish that. This is a tutorial, I will insist you must go back and do. Right? Okay, then of course I'll give you the answers with practice questions. And you must practice. You cannot drop this topic at all. Right? Because in section A, you will expect two questions on tutorial 3 out of the 10 right, that you're going to select. So if you actually manage this topic well, together with your topic 1 to 4, you would have quite a sufficient coverage. Right? Just to pass, not to excel. Okay? Now if you look at the question here, one glance, question 1 is on money demand. Question 2 is money supply, so this is topic 4. So there are not many questions on topic 4. Standard question is always money demand and they love to test risk. Alright, then question 2, they love to test money multiplier and their favourite is cash deposit because you make a lot of mistakes. Alright, so that was only topic 4. Then question 3 to 7 is topic 5. If you actually look very carefully with, okay, let's group it, question 3, question 5 and 6. You can see they are all testing on LM curve. It's a very common trend nowadays. Alright, not that they don't test IS, because they test the IS, the scope of IS in section B. So they will not repeat it in section A. So section A, they will test you everything about LM. So in other words, although you could see topic 4, it seems like, oh, only one question on money demand, one on money supply. But it's actually repeated in LM. So a good graph of topic 4, King's money demand, will reflect how much you can graph for Question 3, 5 and 6. All of the LM curve being steeper, shift of LM, LM and liquidity trap. Alright, so don't be misled thinking that, oh, money market, uh, no need to study two short questions can already. Actually, it's not. It's a build up to understand the LM. Okay, then question 6, uh, question 4 and question 7. Alright, it's very much on ISLM on the country's outputs. Alright, so we don't just expect question on the curve itself. For question 4 and 7, you could see question might require us to draw ISLM to discuss the output. So, before we start the tutorial, have an understanding what tutorial or exam questions focus on. Right? If you look through the lecture notes, so 30 odd pages, you get very lost. You go like, gosh, what is coming up for exam? If you ask me, it's always money demand, money supply, LM curve, IS with LM. Right? Okay? So I'm going to only do two today, then you go back. When I see you in 7 January, you must prepare the rest of the question. Okay? So let's look at the first question. Question 1 and 2 are not difficult. Okay, it's getting very popular, but students make very funny mistakes. 
So let's look at question one. The increase in the risk of bonds or bonds holding will increase demand for money. Okay, so read the question. The question was increase in risk of bonds and the effect is money demand goes up. So of course, as usual, identify the topic. So the topic is money demand. Okay, then we call. Money demand has two models. One is Keynes, H0 plus H1Y minus H2R. The other is Bango Tobin, YTC over So after you read the question, you know you're supposed to have the cost proving the effect. Then you have to take one step back to recall what are the theories of money. So there are actually two. I don't say there are three. Huh? Remember Baumo Tobin, they share the same equation. Y times TC, the transaction cost, divided by 2i. Alright, so which model should we use? If you actually recall, to use Baumo Tobin, the model must assume that banks and FI are stable. In other words, the model actually assumes risk is zero. So therefore, I cannot use bubble tobin. So I, again, I have to plan my answer. I don't write out all models. I will apply the most relevant model. Okay, so in this case, this, this discussion is invalid. But you don't have to tell the examiner you didn't choose this model. This is how I just show you why you can't use this model. Right? Because one of the principal assumptions of this model is banks and FI are very stable. You will put all the money in the bank. You will hold most of your wealth as financial assets. So risk is not critical to you. So risk is assumed to be zero. But here the question was, there was an increase in risk of bonds. Alright, so in other words, you're going to apply, okay, how this can affect money demand. But if you look at the entire equation, where is risk? H0 is your minimum money holding. You need to hold that money because you couldn't use cashless transaction. Alright, okay. H1Y is your income. You hold money for transaction, right, and precautionary motive. H2I is your speculative motive. So where is risk? Right? How do you infuse risk into money demand? Okay, so in this case, you would actually suspect that if risk goes up, two possibilities. Either you take out all the money, you don't even trust the banks, banks are not safe, so H0 goes up. Okay, right? But this is actually a weak answer. Because you only say H0 goes up. So the other better answer is if risk goes up, okay, initially, okay, in short run, Right, individuals will sell FA. Right, if times are bad, people are right, cautious, they will sell away FA, money demand will exceed money supply. Right, because you sell FA, you will hold liquidity. So what will happen? Therefore, banks or FI will increase interest rate. Okay, and therefore, right, individuals, right, will buy if the interest rate can cover the risk. Right, okay, the risk premium, let's say the risk premium example is 5%. There is a 5% risk that the banks will go bankrupt. Then the interest rate the banks must pay probably must be more than 5%. You must cover the risk. You must cover your fear. Alright, so if banks will give you 15%, alright, and there's a 5% chance that it will go bankrupt, you will take the risk. 
because it compensated around your fearful phenomenon. So interest rate must increase, not only that, but more than this. So therefore, you look at the equation. If interest rate goes up, okay, all right, individuals will buy FA, money demand goes up. Based on here, the answer is false. Okay, that the question says risk of bonds. Okay, increase in the risk of bonds holding, money demand goes up. So if you use this, this is true, but it's a very big answer. Because okay, money holding is not so much about risk, it's about convenience of using cash. But if you discuss risk in terms of banks compensating you with better interest rate and you agree to buy, okay, you are convinced to buy, your money demand can go down. So money demand will only go up in short run. So short run is true, you sell away at A. But long run, you will buy again. So generally, the statement is false. Alright, so you explain, you prove by using your mathematical model, you stated your assumption they will buy with interest rate cover risk. Okay? So now we want to challenge our assumption. To say, however, if interest rate goes up but cannot cover risk. Okay? Individuals, therefore, will not buy FA. Okay, and therefore money demand still goes up. So I will not say the statement is true, I'll put a however. To say that, alright, in the entire discussion here, we assume money demand goes down because, because people buy the FA. The interest rate can cover the risk. But if interest rate goes up but cannot cover risk, you won't buy. Okay, example, could be Greece. Indonesia, or even right now, Thailand. Alright, risk is too high. The risk is not just on the bonds, but risk on political stability. Alright, you don't want to buy bonds where you don't know whether the factories will be burned down. Alright, the banks will just say, oh, because of strikes, you cannot operate. You see, you can't. The risk now goes beyond Security, so the risk for risk is actually stability of FI. For Indonesia and Thailand is stability of the entire economy. Right? The political stability, which interest rate may not compensate. Okay, so in this case, you could see money demand can still go up. The second factor right, is how much money demand goes down also depends on H2. Right? Interest rate goes up, but if your H2 is very small, not many people buy bonds. So people are still holding money, they don't react. So it depends on H2. So look at my answer. I have my e picks. I explain, I pick the correct model, Keynes model. Alright, I analyze the behavior, how it affects money demand. I indicate my assumption, it will react to interest rate. I challenge my assumption that interest rate indeed can go up but cannot cover risk. I also highlight the size of H2. Then I see the world to show that in this case, Right? Okay? You can give me high interest rate, but I don't feel safe. I don't buy. So money demand will be high. And that can make the statement true. Right? So always remember, in all your tutorial questions, for all topics, try your very best to do EPICS, E-P-I-C-S. But we are not asking you to able to always do C and S at this moment. As long as you can do your E, P and I. Explain. Proof with your mathematical model, indicate assumptions. Alright, that will give you a good pass. But if you 
you want to excel, it's always challenge assumption, see the world. See the world is not easier. Doesn't mean every question can see the world, but as much as you can. That will give you the bonus point. Alright, so that was on money demand. So look at the question. In the moment you see money demand, alright, just quote the models that you knew. And then pick one that is best explaining the phenomenon. Okay, and then realize that this is not inside, so you have to analyze a bit how our risk affects our short run and long run behavior. Okay, so that was question one. Okay, let's finish off with question two. Question two is very simple. 